Good morning, everyone. Welcome back with nine, day one, and day one of our review for the final exam as well. Today is May 23rd, 2022. Remember that in our last place, we uh, practiced or we evaluated solving systems by graphing. We have two more methods to review that are coming on the exam, and that will be solving systems by substitution and elimination. So as you can see, I'm gonna solve this exercise by substitution, this exercise by elimination, and this exercise with both methods. And now I also have another exercise over here that can barely be seen. We are going to solve that with a method that you decide, okay? Probably elimination, but we're gonna see. Now, before we continue with that, I have over here something that it is really important for you to understand and to remember. If I have, for example, I'm gonna eliminate that, that's in red. But if we have, for example, y plus three equals to three, you can see that we have positive three on the left side and positive three on the right side. So we are going to leave the variable completely alone. And if we have exactly the same variable in, I mean, the same thing, same term in both sides with exactly the same sign, we can say that this three goes to this sign negative. And that will be y is equal to three minus three and three minus three is zero. So if we have exactly the same thing in both sides, exactly the same sign, exactly the same term, exactly the same variable with exactly the same exponent, we can just go ahead and cancel it out. And since we cannot say y is equal to nothing because we have cancel that out, then we say y is equal to zero, okay? We cannot leave an empty space in there. So with that in mind, let's work with the first exercise. We got x minus three y equals to negative seven and two x is equal to six y minus 14, okay? Now, what are we going to do? Since we're solving that by substitution, we are supposed to have one variable in one equation completely alone and positive in one side, okay? So you pick which variable is easier to leave it completely alone and positive in one side from either one of the two equations. So I call the first one equation one, the second one equation two. So which one is easier to leave one variable completely alone and positive in one side? The second one. The second equation, okay, what variable? Mm -hmm. What variable? If it's the second one, what variable? X or Y? Which one, what variable? It doesn't matter, right, Miss? No, it doesn't matter what variable you leave completely. The X. Ah, the X, X of equation two. So I'm going to rewrite my equation two and I'm gonna call it now new equation two, okay? I'm gonna copy it so we can write our new equation two and leave the variable completely alone and positive. So the two is with the X so it's supposed to pass to the other side, dividing. Since we have more than one term on the right side, we are going to pass the two, dividing every single term, okay? So we're gonna have x is equal to six y divided by two, minus 14 divided by two. How much is six divided by two? Three. So three, why? How much is negative 14 divided by two? Seven. Negative seven, very good. And we simplified and we left the variable x completely alone in one side. Now this, we are going to substitute it what x is equal to, we are going to substitute it in the x of the first equation, okay? So instead of x, I'm writing, what I just found, 3y minus seven instead of x. And then I'm gonna copy everything else. Minus 3y equals to negative seven. 
Okay, so remember this is a subtraction, but I can eliminate the parentheses in my next step because it is positive. There's no sign affecting my 3y minus 7, so I can just go ahead and do it like that. Now, in this case, you can see that I have 3y minus 3y. So 3y minus 3y, those are like terms. And how much is that? How much is 3y minus 3y? Zero. Zero, so I can cancel them out. And what do I have left? Negative seven equals to negative seven. So remember, we have three types of solutions. One solution when we have a value of x and a value of y. No solution when we have something that's not real, like zero equals to 20, and infinitely many solutions when you have something that is real, like zero equals to zero, or in this case, negative seven equals to negative seven. So how many solutions do we have? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. And that is your final answer. Questions? Questions? No? We clear about this? And that is the method of substitution, okay? Now, let's go with the second one and let's do it with elimination. When we are solving systems with elimination, we are going to have to have both variables in the same side in both equations, okay? So in substitution, I need one variable of one equation, any variable, completely unknown and positive. In elimination method, I need both variables of both equations on the same side. Do I have both variables on the same side in both equations? Do I have both variables on the same side on both equations? No. No. So I am going to copy the first one because the first one has both variables on the same side. And for the second one, I'm going to pass this 9x to the left, and I'm going to pass it with an inverse operation, which in this case will be a negative. So I'm going to have negative 9x plus 6y equals to positive 9. That will be my first step. You have both, uh, both variables on both equations on the same side. Now, step two. Pick a variable that you want to eliminate. How do you pick a variable that will be easier to eliminate? Well, look at both variables. They need to have exactly the same number, but with different signs. So which one of those variables will be easier to eliminate, to make them have exactly the same number, but with different signs? Mm -hmm. Which one would be easier to eliminate, the X or the Y? Which one would be easier? We've got 3X and negative 9. We've got negative 2Y and positive 6y. So which variable is easier to eliminate or to have at least the same number, but with different sign? Variable x. Variable x. OK. In order for me to have the variable x exactly the same number, by what number should I multiply which equation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Miss, can you repeat that question? By what number should I multiply which equation in order to have exactly the same number in the variable x but with different signs? 
multiplying the 3x by 3. Multiplying the 3x by 3. But I'm not just going to multiply the 3x. I'm going to multiply the whole equation by that, by, by that 3. So 3 times 3x. Three positive 9x. Positive 9x. 3 times negative 2y. Negative 6 y. Negative 6 y equals to 3 times negative 3. Negative 9. Negative 9. And I'm going to copy my second equation just as it is because I'm not doing nothing to that one. So I'm just going to pass it over here. I'm crossing it over with a line. And now I'm going to simplify. So we are canceling the x because we're making the x a 9. So one nine positive and one nine negative, they cancel out. But one six y negative and one six y positive, they also cancel out. Oh, but a negative nine and a positive nine, they also cancel out. So I'm left only with the equal sign that I didn't cancel. But can I leave an empty space equal to an empty space? The best way is to say zero equals to zero. Exactly. So I cannot leave an empty space. I just go ahead and place a zero equals to zero. So how many solutions do I have in this exercise? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions as well as the first one. Why? Because it is true. Zero is equal to zero. And that is how you're going to be having an equation, a system of equations that are infinitely many solutions solved with elimination. Questions so far? No? Okay, I'm gonna move this so we can have both exercises uh, that we have on the other side that we haven't seen yet visible. So I'm gonna move this all the way to here. Now, remember I told you, we are going to solve the same exercise with both methods. I'm gonna start over here with elimination. And I got negative four x minus two y equals to 20 and two x plus y equals to 19. Okay, so I identify already equation one and equation two. This is gonna be solved by elimination. Remember, we need to have one variable that has exactly the same number but different signs, one positive, one negative, okay? So we've got negative for x minus 2y equals to 20 and 2x plus y equals to 19. Which number would be easier or which variable would be easier to make them have exactly the same number but with different signs? Multiplying the second, the second one by two. Okay, by multiplying the second one by two. So I'm gonna multiply the second equation by two. And according to that, the first one is not seen and it's not changed. Okay, so I got four X minus two I equals to 20. Let's multiply the second one. Two X times two. All right, four X. Four X. Ne uh, positive Y times two. <clears throat> 2y. Positive 2y. 19 times 2? 38. 38. I'm passing a line underneath it so we can simplify. We are canceling the x because one is negative 4 and the other one is positive 4, so we cancel out. But I can also cancel out the negative 2y with the positive y, and that's it, right? So I got nothing equals to 20 plus 38. How much is 20 plus 38? 58. 58, but can I leave nothing on one side? No, right? But zero. The place is zero. Is zero equals to 58? So what is my solution? No solution. Actually, it's yeah. there no solution. solution. Very good. So it is no solution. So this is how you identify a no solution. 
when it is something natural, zero equals to 58. Okay, now let's do it with substitution. We are supposed to get exactly the same answer. No solution, but with another method, okay? Now remember, when we are working with substitution, we need to have one variable completely alone and completely positive in any of the two equations. In this case, both variables are on the same side. So pick an equation that will be easier to leave a variable completely alone and positive in one side. What equation should I rewrite? Equation one, equation two. Which one is easier to leave one variable completely alone and positive in one side? Mm -hmm. equation, two. equation two, very good. So I'm gonna write now my new equation two. So I'm gonna copy my equation two and I'm gonna leave what variable completely alone? 2x. The 2x, I'm gonna leave it alone or the 2x is the one that I'm moving. Mm -hmm. Which variable should I leave alone, the X or the Y? Which one is easier? The Y. The Y. The y. The y. So the 2X is the one that should be moved to the right with an inverse operation. If it's positive, it goes negative. So I'm going to have Y is equal to 19 minus 2x. Now this that I have over here is what I need to substitute on the y of the equation that I haven't used in this case of equation one. So I'm going to have negative 4x minus 2 and instead of y I'm using the 19 minus 2x. Okay equals to 20. See, I just substituted the value of y that I got inside of the first equation. And this requires for us to do this pretty property, okay? So we're gonna have negative four x. How much is negative two times 19? Negative 38. Negative 38. How much is negative two times negative two x? Positive 4x. Positive 4x equals to 20. Now you see I got negative 4x and 4x. Those are like terms, but one is positive and one is negative, exactly the same number. So I can cancel them out and they become a zero. And what do I have left? Negative 38 is equal to 20. Is negative 20, uh, 38 equal to 20? No. No, it is not. So what is my answer? No solution. No solution. And you see, that is how you're gonna do it when you have the substitution method. Questions about this? No, we clear? Okay, let's do the very last exercise. And let's do it with elimination, okay? So I have five X plus seven Y equals to three. And I got 2x plus 3y equals to 1. Every single variable in both equations are positive. One is 5x, the other one is 2x. One is 7y, the other one is 3y. Which variable am I going to eliminate? By what number should I multiply what equation in order to have one of those variables with exactly the same number, but one negative and one positive. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to find it. Like in this one, this one was easy. We wanted to eliminate the X and we have a two X and negative four. So ah, multiply by two, they already have different signs. In this case, it is not that easy. So in this case, I need to find the LCM, 
the least uh, ALC, the least common multiple, okay? And the least common multiple is actually a number, the smallest number that can be divided by five and by two or by seven and by three, okay? So let's pick first a variable that we want to eliminate, X or Y. Come on, we only have like a couple of minutes. So what variable are we going to eliminate? The X or the Y? Mm -hmm. The X or the Y? I guess the Y. The Y? Okay, so in that case, we need to find the LCM, the least common multiple. So that means the smallest number that can be divided by seven and by three. They're both positives. So that means that one of the two equations needs to be multiplied by a negative number. Okay, which one? It doesn't matter. I'm going to multiply this one by a negative number. Okay, so by what number should I multiply the three in order to have a number that is exactly the same as the one that I get by multiplying the seven by another number. I know that was a tricky word, okay? So let's think what number appears in both multiplication tables of the seven and of three. Whenever it is hard to identify it, you can use prime factorization. In this case, both numbers are prime numbers. So we say three and seven and we cross the line. What is the smallest prime number that can divide three? Uh, any of those numbers, sorry, it will be three. Three divided by three, one. Seven cannot be divided by three. What is the next smallest prime number that can divide any of those numbers? Well, seven. That will be one and one. And you multiply every single prime number that you got in that side, and that will be your LCM or your LCD. In this case, three times seven, 21. This 21 is the number that you should have over here and over here, because that's the number, the smallest number that appears in the multiplication table of seven and of three. So seven by what number will give me 21? By three. Three times what number will give me 21? By seven. But in this case, it is negative seven. Why negative seven? Because we decided to make this one the negative one, okay? So let's multiply. Five X times three. Five right, X seems three. I'll say 15 X. 15 X. Seven Y times three. I'll say 21 Y. So plus 21y equals to three times three? Nine. Nine. Two x times negative seven? Not a 14 x. Negative 14 x. Three y times negative seven? Not a 21 y. Negative 21 y equals to one times negative seven? Seven. Negative seven. I pass a line underneath it and I can cancel or start uh, dividing. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out the y's because those are the ones that have exactly the same number but with different signs. And how much is 15x minus 14x? X. X. How much is 9 minus 7? Positive 2. And X is equal to two. Now this value, I'm going to substitute it inside of any of the two equations, whichever equation you want. I will be using the second one because I think that it has smaller numbers and it will be easier. So I'm going to have two instead of X, the value that we just found, which was two plus three Y equals to one. Two times two, Four. Four plus three Y is equal to one. 
the four is added and that's the constant. So it goes to the other side subtracted. So I have three Y is equal to one minus four. How much is one minus four? Negative three. Negative three. Now the three is multiplying process to the other side dividing. And now I have Y is equal to negative three over three. How much is that? Negative one. Negative one. So how many solutions do I have? One solution. One solution. One solution. And what is my solution? What is my solution? Two comma negative one. Two comma negative one. Very good. And now we just need to prove it. Okay, you need to do the proof. Why? Because it is one solution. You just need to prove that the answer is correct. And how do you uh, prove that? By substituting your solution inside of both equations. So we're gonna have five times instead of X, two plus seven, and instead of Y, negative one. And that's supposed to be equal to three. So we simplify that and we get five times two, 10. Seven times negative one, negative seven. That is supposed to be equal to three. And 10 minus seven, it is three. Three is equal to three? Yes, it is correct. Now we do the same thing with the second equation. So we got two and instead of X, two plus three, and instead of Y, negative one, and it is supposed to be equal to positive one. We simplify, two times two is four, three times negative one, it's negative three, four minus three is one, and that was supposed to be equal to one. Is it true? Yes. So your answer is one solution. And that is what we were going to be simplifying and reviewing today. Any questions? No question? Okay, then. This is review day one.